Hello and thanks for looking back. Now I'm not up at the Super 4 layout today because indeed time has been against me so I've not made any progress with the other industrial engines but I have got this wonderful clockwork engine on the bench that I showed you ooh, earlier in the year I think we ran it round and had a bit of fun. So the reason it's on the bench is when I got it out the stop lever wouldn't work so I couldn't stop and start the clockwork mechanism now I'll see if I can demonstrate this to you now it's a, a quite a really nice looking old Hornby engine so I'm just going to slip a um, bit of a cotton glove on while I handle it because even though there's a few scratches on the paintwork it's in quite nice condition and I want to preserve it but before I wind it up we might just take a quick look around it so what have we got on this ancient O-gauge engine? Well, uh, we've actually got a lamp bracket there on the end of the boiler. So uh, quite advanced. I think Hornby is still catching up with those right now. Uh, some lovely writing on the back. Hornby Type 101 made in England by Meccano Limited. And then we've got the control levers. Um, there's two, they're just simple push and pull levers. Um, the one here, this is the forward and reverse. So if I turn it over, you'll see when I pull it, it operates a mechanism on the gears just in the axle there and switches over where the gears mesh just to give me forward or reverse. But it's this thing that doesn't work, the stop and start. So how do I demonstrate that. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's put a little bit of energy into it. So it has run down. Right, hopefully that'll be enough. Now, if I let go, you can see the wheels are revolving there. And I think that looks backwards. So let's change it to forwards. Now, if I move this lever, which if I try and get it into shot, is the stop start. Watch this. Very little effect. Slows it down a fraction, maybe, but no good at all. Right, well, I've got a few spare minutes to share with you. So let's have a go at stripping this down and seeing if we can fix it. Now, I've never taken one of these apart. So we're going to have that sort of experiment together. Um, these seem a little bit wobbly and floppy. Now, if I turn it over, I can immediately see we've got some what look like good old Meccano nuts on each end of the mechanism. So they're probably going to be a good place to start. So if you do know how to take one of these apart and I'm doing it wrong, please bear with me because um, we all have to learn about these things one way or another. So I'm just seeing if I can gently loosen off the two nuts here. Now I haven't got a box spanner the right size for these, so I'm just very gently seeing whether I can loosen them off. So let's just see. I'm going to take them right off yet. I'm going to sort of spin them to the end of the threads. Okay, doesn't seem to be much movement on the mechanism, but I think if I just get these off a little bit, we'll be... Oh, right. Well, what I can feel now, and I'll try and show you this, I think it's the pressure of the main spring. Now, I'm wondering now, as it's fully unwound, whether that's pressing on the bodywork, so... I haven't really got any means of stopping this. Um, okay, well, let's have a little think about this. I'm just reaching over to the side on my desk and I've got a little old paintbrush, wooden handled paintbrush. So I think I'm gonna see whether it'll fit through the spokes of the wheel. There we go. Okay, well, that's gonna stop it revolving. So I wonder now, if I just take um, time to give it a little bit of a, a wind again. 
and it's because it's loose I've slightly up, um, I've changed the position of the winding hole so I'm just pressing on the mechanism to see whether I can I'm not going to wind it right up but I wonder if I can just um, still some pressure keep unless it's the operating levers ah okay now I don't have any pre and look how loose that part of the mechanism is right okay let's maybe spin so I've got and that does look like a Meccano nut doesn't it and then under that is what looks like a spring washer so I'm going to see if I can just get that in my pliers seems to be a fair bit of fluff coming out of this let's just move these glasses out the way okay so that's one nut removed now I am trying to do this as I like to make my videos sort of without too many edits so I do want to keep it short but uh, let's see if we can go in real time so there's the other so what we've got now is two nuts Oh, we, yeah, we got a bit of movement, but OK, it looks to me now. OK, let's see if I can get some light in that cab. OK, well, it, perhaps you can see that those levers go through holes in the cab. And now I'm looking at it a bit more closely. It does look like these control knobs. Oh, well, that one's loose. I think they're just threaded. OK, I'm going to whip these off. So unfortunately, I just dropped that, but let's get it back to there. This one is tight. That's come undone. How nicely these old things were made. Check it out as well. I've just noticed there's a little, um, it's got bent in, little tin plate lamp bracket on the back there. I wonder if they did some accessories to hang on that. Now it looks to me like with all my fiddling around, I've got one of the, the sort of uh, what would be a piston rod or a connecting rod has come out. Um, this side, no, but that might because it's, I don't know, let's just experiment and see what we can do. I have got my glove on. It's, um, yeah, I might, I might be really, not doing this right i think because i've got the it's a bit difficult oh, i can see what's happened there the that's got wedged on the cab so i'm just going to try and just pull that out again there we go because i'd like to just try and get this back a bit there just gently right well that's the con the con rods are now freed off um, it does appear, oh, and it's just slipping forwards. Okay, success, right. So I think this is just something that when you've done it a few times, you probably know exactly how to do it. But let's just put this down. And while I've got my gloves on, we'll take another look at the, the body now it's removed. So look, you can really see that shiny tin plate in the inside there and i think the spring i think the spring has been pushing on the top of this when it's fully exhausted so yeah pretty good idea just to wind it up a little bit to get it out you can see where the couplings are riveted on we've got the two bolts to hold the mechanism in and everything's just a bit like our adventures with hornby double we've got lots of tabs all folded over we've got that wonderful sort of i don't know what it's properly called sort of litho printing it's a wonderful oh, it just looks great look at the shadowing on that lner we've got the gold the black and the red i, I love this old stuff i know it's old and not very realistic but it's just great to handle but uh, that looks nice, doesn't it? So let's put this to one side now. And um, I don't think I need my cotton glove on to handle the clockwork. And indeed, 
I think it looks a bit grubby. That's oh my goodness, right? Okay, I think you can see now that uh, already my fingers are rubbing off quite a bit of dirt and oil, but that's only to be expected, isn't it? So these levers just seem, I'm sure that when it's wound up, in fact, I tell you what, as it's nice and Let's just, let's just see if we can wind it up a bit more. The reason I want to do that is I want to lower the main spring down a bit. Just perhaps a couple more clicks because looking at it, I think I can probably remove this control rod now. Okay, now that's the backwards and forwards linkage. There we go. So I'll put that to one side. I do hope oh, it's trying to escape now. So I wonder if it's come out of gear. All right, just keep a little bit of pressure on that because I don't want to slip the gears. Um, I was just about to say, I hope you can see most of this because it's a bit tricky. All right, let's have a look. So that's the brake linkage. Right, so what I'll do now is see, whoop, see if I can remove my paintbrush, um, find somewhere to grab it, perhaps here. Right, so it's now freewheeling. So I'm just stopping the mechanism with my thumb on that gear. I'm going to try and get it so it's driving the wheels. Right. Okay, now let's operate the brake lever. And you can see very little is happening. Now, okay. Now, if I push back on it, it slows down a bit. So, I'm just going to hold the wheels now. And let's see if I can get some detail for you to see. I need a pointer. Right, let's go back to my paintbrush. So here, now this is rather like a lot of Meccano clockwork motors, we've got a steel, like a bit like a thimble, but it's more like a, a, a cylinder with a bottom on that's fixed to this side of the mechanism. And inside that is a governor. So an item that spins around and when it gets up to a certain speed, it can't travel out any further. So it keeps it... Uh, it stops it just running away too fast. But looking at this, it looks like there's a lever down there. And if I just push this away, it's, there we go. Um, I'm trying to get some light. It's very difficult. There we are. There's, um, now if I point to that, there's a little edge on this lever that when it pulls back should rub on the governor. And it's not. Now I'm just looking at the the bearings here and if I run this and push the brake on can you see that that spindle it, it's going in and that, it's a bit worn but you can forgive it for being worn can't you because of how old it is. Um, so this thing is all fixed together with tabs. You can see that this side, if you were to take the wheels out, you've got the tabs that hold the clockwork mechanism together. So we don't want to be bending those unnecessarily. In fact, I think probably an easy fix is just going to be to adjust the position of that tab. Now to do that, I'm going to need a fine pair of pliers um, you can just about see it there. Uh, the focus isn't great, but it's just not touching the governor. OK, I'm going to stop the recording for a minute and I'm just going to get a pair of pliers and tweak at that tab and just see whether bending it by no more than a couple of millimetres, probably not even that, will bring it back into use. So I'll just do that off camera and then we'll take another look. Right, well, we just had a couple, I mean, literally a couple of minutes away. Now, 
you might see that this looks a slightly different shape. It's very soft tin, but look now at what happens with this lever. In fact, just before I demonstrate, let's put plenty of pressure into the mechanism because it's no good tensioning this brake when the motor is nearly exhausted. So let's wind it right up. And if it works when the spring is fully wound, we're going to be there. Now, I hope you haven't found this too boring. It's just a little bit of a snippet of the fun of model railways and what you can do just when you get a bit of spare time. Right, so I'm going to push the brake forward. Oh, wow. Pull it back and we stop. Forward, back. Now, underneath, there's this little device. Now, I've got a couple of sections. Look at my fingers, by the way. This uh, it's not exactly the cleanest job, is it? Um, there's a little piece of track that operates this. You can set it to run over. Now, when I take the brake off, I think when the train runs in to the piece that sticks up out of the track, you've got a remote stop. So already I can see that that's working. Now you can see that that's loose. Brake off brings it into a tighter position. So brake coming off, um, hold on, just being careful of these con rods. Brake coming off now and that's pretty fixed. So if I simulate the train driving into my finger, so whoop, as soon as it runs into that tab, it automatically applies the brake. So I wouldn't mind saying now that we've restored the re remote control stopping of this loco to full working condition. OK, well, a bit of a strange video, but if you like to see inside an old O-gauge Hornby loco, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this. Um, there are some, look, there's a little bit of brass in the clockwork there. So this bearing that's uh, probably got the most strain on it, the main spring, has got, not this side, I don't think, but on this side, they've, they've actually put a brass bush. But everything else, it's just tin plate, so how's it lasted this long? I mean, when you look in at these gears, they've probably just been stamped out. There's no real bearings. It's just, it's just mass produced, but it's mass produced in a way that it has life. And even after all these years, look at all the play in these joints. Look at the, I mean, you're not really gonna be setting back to back on these, are you? I mean, you, this is about as far away from your lovely new locos that uh, sort of cost 300 quid plus that you can get, but it still works. Uh, and whatever they made these wheels of, they haven't degraded yet, whether they're a Mazak or a, I don't know what they are. In fact, let's see if I can find a wire brush because they are grubby. I mean, there's a there's no doubt how grubby they are. Let's just see if we can. Yeah, I mean, that would really respond to a clean. So I might give the wheels a bit of a clean. Yeah, look how that comes up. I mean, already just a, that's really quite nice, isn't it? Now I'm going to have to do all of them. So what will I do with the mechanism? Well, I mean, I could wash it out. Um, yeah, I could completely submerge it in a cleaning fluid, wash it out. But I'm, I'm just not wanting to do that. It's survived all these years. It's in good repair. I think I'm probably going to add a little bit of lubrication to each of the bearing points. Um, clean off a little bit of this grubbiness. But I'm just not going to get too carried away. I want to use this. I don't want to take it apart because you only bend these a few times, they're going to snap off. So the amount of times I'm going to use it every now and then just for a bit of fun, I think I'll just clean it up, re-lubricate it and then just run it. So here's your gear lever. Let's just check that out. Now. I just took a little bit of tension off there. I just want to see whether you can see 
the movement. So in this direction, there's a, another sort of small gear under there that moves into mesh over that side of the motor. And then when I move it in this direction, it's very deep. I'm going to point this out to you. So, where's my pointer? In there, that little pinion is now meshing on this gear. So, very simple. And look at that. A working brake again. Well, I hope this has inspired you to do something to something that you've perhaps got a bit of trouble with at the moment. It doesn't matter whether it's with your track or your points or even a piece of rolling stock that, I don't know, is jumping off the rails or the coupling's broken. The thing about model railways, all of it, is you've got to have fun. Now, if it stops being fun, my philosophy is you just move away for a little while, go and do something else. I mean, if you were to look around here, and I'm not going to show you, I've got two or three electronics um, things I've been repairing that are giving me, I've got a power supply, a switching power supply on an old piece of hi-fi. I've changed capacitors, diodes, all sorts of different things that I keep thinking are testing bad. I switch it on, run it up, it's perfect, switch it off and it won't restart hot. When it cools down, it restarts. I've got some freezer spray, squiff a freezer spray, off it goes again and you can leave it on all day and it works fine. You switch it off, go to switch it on again. It's got to be stone cold before it goes. So it could be anything. It could be a hairline clack, uh, hairline clack, hairline crack in the circuit board. Um, yeah, as simple as that, a dry joint somewhere that I haven't found. I don't know. Um, it's a component that's just breaking down under heating. It got me really frustrated, so I put it away. But I'm nearly ready to have another go. And that should be the same with model railway things. You know, we just, if you've got a bad connection somewhere or something's not quite right and it's driving you up the wall, go and do something else. Have a bit of fun with something else. If you've got a loco that's messing you about, put it away, come back to it in a week or two. You know, you don't want to spoil your enjoyment by thinking that you can fix everything immediately. Right, I can hear that clock striking now, which means I've got to go and do one final job for the day. I've enjoyed just standing here for 20 minutes or so, showing you the inside of this wonderful engine. And I'll just pick it up, even though my hands are dirty, just to give you a final look. Um, and as always, I look forward to any comments. But for now, I'm off. So until the next video, I'll just say goodbye.